So there's one playlist that I've been meaning to check out with you guys, a very special type of music, which used to be memed on and is now um, loved by everybody. New Metal. What's up, everybody? I'm Finn McKenty. This is the Punk Rock NBA. And over the past few years of making videos, one thing has become very, very clear to me. Absolutely everybody loves new metal. And it's not just old people like me who are there at the beginning and trying to like relive the glory days. There's a whole new generation of people. It's also these Deftones loving e-girls on TikTok who mostly weren't even born when Korn was battling Backstreet Boys for the top spot on TRL. It's rappers like Lil Uzi Vert. The sick new world festival just happened and was sold out, I think, in like half a day. And according to Google Trends, interest in new metal is at the highest point it's been in 20 years. And the honest truth is that even though new metal basically died in the mid 2000s, with the possible exception of emo, nothing in the rock and metal world has come along since then that's had that same kind of mass appeal, staying power and incredibly broad influence. And the question that I want to ask is why? Why is new metal's popularity surging and why hasn't anything else in the last 20 years of rock and metal been as popular as new metal? Those are the questions that I will answer in this video. But first, is something interfering with your happiness or preventing you from achieving your goals? But regardless if you have a clinical mental health issue like depression or anxiety, or if you're just a human who lives in this world who's going through a hard time, therapy can give you the tools to approach your life in a very different way. And that is why I'm excited to tell you about today's sponsor, BetterHelp. BetterHelp's mission is to make therapy more affordable and more accessible. And this is an important mission because as some of you probably know, finding a therapist can be really hard especially when you're limited to just the options in your area. BetterHelp is a platform that makes it easier to find a therapist because it's online, it's remote, and by filling out a few questions, BetterHelp can match you to a professional in as little as a few days. Just go to the link in the description of this video, which is betterhelp.com slash thepunkrock. Clicking that link helps support this channel, and it also gets you 10% off your first month of BetterHelp. If you really don't fit with that therapist, which is a common thing with therapy, you can easily switch to a different therapist for free without stressing about insurance or who's in your network or any of that stuff. Just click the link in the description or go to betterhelp.com slash thepunkrock. And thank you again to BetterHelp for supporting this channel. So first of all, let me talk about exactly what I'm seeing, and then we can talk about why it's happening. I've been on YouTube since 2017, and the one type of content that pretty much reliably gets more views than anything else is new metal, which initially was kind of surprising to me because if you were around back in the day when all that stuff came out, you'll remember that all the critics, the older bands, and the media all pretty much universally hated new metal. For example, here's what Entertainment Weekly said about Slipknot back in 2001. Slipknot, a god-awful gaggle of corn-fed, mask-wearing Midwesterners who identify themselves not by names, but by numbers 0 to 8, are the current Lucky Ducks. Their second album, Iowa, has arrived on wings of hype and buzz. It's an almost unrelentingly brutal disc that, like so much of new metal, often seems like a parody of itself. But that was 22 years ago, and the tables have definitely turned. Like I said earlier, according to Google Trends, interest in new metal is now at its highest level in almost 20 years, and it's not just limited to that. This May, the Sick New World Festival happened in Las Vegas, headlined by System of a Down, with other bands on the bill like Korn, Deftones, Papa Roach, Kitty, Cold Chamber, P.O.D. If you didn't know better, you would swear you were back in 2003. It's just one of those days where you don't want to wake up. Everything is fucked. Everybody sucks. And it sold out in something like half a day, which definitely tells you something. But what's interesting to me is that this was more than just a sold out festival. This felt like, I guess you could say, a cultural event in a way that you don't really see from metal festivals here in America. For example, a lot of creators went and documented it, like my friends at Neopunk FM. We are Neopunk FM, and we go to internet music concerts and document the people. And since new metal is getting popular on the internet, we knew we had to go to the most hyped new metal festival of the year, Sick New World. There were even some, I guess you could say, like relatively mainstream creators there, like SS Sniper Wolf. It felt special. It felt like people were just like ready for new metal to come back, and people were losing their shit.
And speaking of Deftones, if My Chemical Romance were kind of the flagship band of the emo revival, Deftones are the leaders of the new metal revival. And what's really interesting about it to me is that just like with MCR, the Deftones revival is not just old people. In fact, if anything, I would say that the majority of Deftones fans that I see now are these younger Gen Z people who discovered the band through TikTok. That's uh, Labia. Mm -hmm. Genesis. Mm -hmm. Ascara. That's too easy. But it's definitely not just Deftones. Younger people are into all the new metal bands from Limp Bizkit. To Slipknot. And of course, the godfathers of new metal, Korn. And one other interesting thing I've noticed about this new metal revival is there's a lot of women who are into it, especially Deftones. which I think is a great thing to see because the sad truth is that metal has been kind of a sausage fest for a while now. And it's also encouraging from just like a bigger picture perspective, because if you notice, the scene is always bigger when there's a lot of women who are involved. For example, the 2000s pop punk era with Blink and Good Charlotte and all that stuff. And then a few years later, all the emo stuff in the 2000s, like Panic at the Disco and Paramore, or all the metalcore and deathcore stuff of the later 2000s, like Asking Alexandria, Suicide Silence, Pierce the Veil, all that stuff, when the MySpace scene girls were kind of the key demographic. And to me, the TikTok Deftones girls are really just an updated version of the MySpace scene girls from 15 years ago. And this is a good thing because in case you didn't know, women are half the planet and we probably don't want to exclude them from the scene. But also because, as I've talked about before, young women are the single most powerful demographic in terms of deciding what becomes popular in pop culture. I mean, if you think about it, almost nothing becomes really, truly huge in mainstream pop culture unless young women are into it. K-pop, Stranger Things, The Beatles, Harry Potter, young women made all of those things blow up. So we should be very happy to see them getting into new metal now. And anytime I see some big trend like this happening, I always want to understand why. Why are people latching onto new metal and why are they doing it now, 20 years after the peak of the genre? And to answer that, let's talk about why new metal got big in the first place. The first thing that may seem obvious, but I think a lot of people miss, is just really, truly great songwriting in a way that I just don't hear from a lot of current metal bands. I think Linkin Park was probably the most accessible of all the new metal bands. They had that kind of like pop sensibility that I think was a really key part of what made them sell more records than anybody else in the genre. I think I've mentioned this before, but my 40 year old sister in law from Vietnam, who like doesn't even really listen to music, she knows and loves a lot of Linkin Park songs. And I think that says a lot. I mean, you could play this for just about anybody who's into any kind of music and they would appreciate it. Linkin Park could get played on the alternative rock station, on the mainstream rock station. Some of their later stuff could and did even get played on pop radio. And how many modern metal bands could we say that about? And you can say what you want about Limp Bizkit. Personally, I think they're kind of corny, but their songs get stuck in your head like peanut butter on the roof of your mouth. I mean, it is just straight up fun to sing along to something like Break Stuff or Rollin'. Let's take even a relatively extreme new metal band like Slipknot, whose music was borderline death metal at times. I know sometimes people don't believe me when I say that, but in case you forgot, the first actual song on Iowa, which is an album that went to number three on Billboard, opens with a blast beat. But even being so heavy, Slipknot's songs were just incredibly catchy and full of hooks. Maybe not as accessible as Linkin Park, obviously, but still. It was almost like death metal with a pop sensibility. Or if you look at Korn, they were just incredibly twisted with lyrics about sexual abuse and all kinds of other like super dark stuff. These really noisy, sludgy riffs that even by today's standards are pretty intense.
And yet again, they still had that pop sensibility with songs like Freak on a Leash, which got them on mainstream radio and competing for the top slots on TRL with legitimate pop acts like NSYNC and Backstreet Boys. And so my point here is that when you look at new metal from a songwriting perspective, it's pretty clear why a lot of people loved and still do love those songs and how many current metal bands are even trying to write hooks like this. I feel like this whole idea of trying to write accessible songs just went out the window. And for anybody who may not be familiar with me, I am not one of those like music was better back in my day type people. So that's not what's going on here. In fact, in general, I think music now is way better than it was 20 or 30 years ago. But that's just my opinion. And I say you be the judge. Listen to modern metal like this band Invent Animate that metal fans would tell you is the future of the genre and they're going to take over the world. What do you think? Do you think this songwriting is even in the same universe as a band like Slipknot or Linkin Park? And if you like modern metal, that's totally OK. I'm not telling you to stop liking it. My point is just that, yes, modern metal is obviously way heavier and way more technical than anything 20 years ago. But most people don't care about heavier technical. Most people care about songs. And so, of course, a lot of these young people are getting into new metal because those are great songs. And if you're looking for great songs, well, modern metal has largely abandoned the whole idea of writing songs at all. I feel like a lot of it is guitarists just sort of throwing a bunch of riffs together to try to impress other guitarists. And the second big factor in the rise of new metal, as well as its continued relevance, is that it was, for lack of a better word, a spectacle. I just did a podcast with Kyle from Brand of Sacrifice, and he said it perfectly. New metal bands looked like video game characters. The sort of the rock star age is, is back maybe in the, in the pop and hip hop world, the way people act and dress and portray themselves. So I think we need to follow suit and sort of be characters that you'd want to select in a video game or something, you know? <laughs> there was Slipknot with their jumpsuits and masks and the horde of henchmen on stage with them banging on steel drums and stuff. There was Korn with their dreads and Adidas gear, Wayne Static's hair, Fred Durst's hat, the guy from Mudvayne who glued bugles to his face. It's going to be the raddest thing we'll you've ever seen. bugles on his face, gluing them. Perfect. Can you paint them? We can make them, we can make them longer. And of course, all the B tier bands like Mushroom Head, Moto Grader, or Twisted Method, who maybe didn't have the songs, but definitely had the look. The point that I'm making here is that new metal bands have always had some sort of visual trademark that set them apart. I want to use the word gimmick, but that feels like an insult and I don't mean it that way. What I mean is that you can imagine picking them from the character selection menu of some imaginary N64 game that came out in a parallel universe. And beyond just the way that they looked, New Metal was full of these huge personalities, these super charismatic people that you kind of just can't ignore. Fred Durst was the biggest example of this. I've talked about him before, but he was just all over the media. He was rumored to be dating Britney Spears. He got dissed by Eminem. He did that duet with Christina Aguilera. Or take Corey Taylor, for example, who is still in the headlines of the metal sites almost every other day with what does Corey Taylor think about what David Lee Roth said about what Axl Rose thinks about what Corey Taylor thinks, which on the one hand is kind of funny, but I think really that just speaks to what a compelling person he is. They're still writing about him 25 years after Slipknot came out because people care what Corey Taylor thinks. There's also people like Surge from System of Down, Joey Jordison, Wes Borland, Jonathan Davis. New Metal was just full of these people. And you can say that all the visual gimmicks and the gossip headlines shouldn't matter because it should be all about the music. But the fact is that it does matter. Because remember, this is the entertainment industry. People call it the music industry, but that's not really true. Because their job isn't just to show up and play their guitar, it's to entertain us, to put on a show. And right or wrong, Fred Durst is a very entertaining person. And Slipknot's crazy outfits are entertaining. It's like a WWE show, but metal. And where is all of that in modern metal? I feel like these days in the metal scene, it's almost frowned upon to be interesting or to stand out in any way. I think we need to end just wearing the regular band shirts on stage in the gym shorts. I think that's yep. got to be retired for good. It's frustrating to me because I feel like the culture now in metal is almost like, you know, it's frowned upon to be different. And I, I don't understand that. Bands now just kind of want to show up in black jeans and a t-shirt, looking like the door guy from your local venue, never say anything controversial or challenging on social media, just, hey, our new single is out, pre-save now. And can we be surprised that people are looking past them to the new metal bands from 20 years ago? Where are all the big personalities in rock now? Other than maybe Ronnie Radke, I really can't think of many. This is your song, I've never done it like this. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my god.
Killed that. Another big factor, I think, is that new metal had this rare ability to appeal to a very wide range of people. Of course, when you think of new metal, there's the stereotypical Midwestern kid with the Jankos and addiction to Mountain Dew. But new metal was much more than that. It could appeal to everyone from like the tap out bros to a tank crew in the military or a guy working in a machine shop or to the emo kid, edgy moms or that sort of weird intersection of like redneck and emo. I mean, that's a big part of why they were able to sell tens of millions of albums. And I don't really think you can say that about modern metal, which seems to be pretty much aimed at nerdy guys in their 20s who play guitar. And there's nothing wrong with being a nerdy guy in your 20s who plays guitar. But my point is that that is a relatively small market. And so with all of that in mind, it makes perfect sense that when a new generation of people discovers this stuff, it clicks with them in a way that modern metal just doesn't. And so I think the simple truth is that nothing has come along to dethrone new metal because modern metal honestly just isn't as good, or at least it's not good in the way that most people care about. I think the overall trendiness of Y2K fashion and culture is probably also part of it, as well as, of course, TikTok being essentially the best platform of all time for people to discover some sort of niche interest and just completely go down that rabbit hole. And let's be real, unfortunately, the generation of people might age who discovered new metal back in the day when it first came out. We are now old enough to have kids in high school, which is probably also a factor. And so my biggest question is, what's next? Where do we go from here? I'm sure that some percentage of the Gen Z kids who discovered Deftones and Slipknot on TikTok will end up getting into Bad Omens, Lorna Shore, or Spirit Box, because those are all great bands who are doing a lot of things right. But I think in general, if you care about the future of metal, then you should be worried that new metal, a genre which peaked 20 years ago, is more compelling to young people now than 99% of modern metal. To me, that is a giant flashing red warning sign that all these modern bands need to do more than just copy Slipknot's riffs. They should be asking themselves much bigger questions than that. Like, what did Slipknot, Deftones, Korn, Limp Bizkit, Linkin Park, what did those bands do that we aren't? And of course, they should take a page out of Mudvayne's book and glue bugles to their faces. All right, my friends, that does it for this video. As always, let me know what you think in the comments. Also, I want to thank everyone who supports me on Patreon, especially those of you who support at the true cult level or above. Patrons get all my podcasts and videos a week early. There are VIP channels on my Discord that I'm super active in. I do giveaways and there's a way to have me review your music. So if any of that sounds cool to you, hit the link in the description of this video. And with that, I'm going to sign off for now, but I will see you next time.